I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike McStape. This is the podcast where we keep it classy most of the time. Let me introduce you to the brotherhood slash sisterhood of cinema here. First up, we've got James Sullivan, also known as Hummy Dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Crystal Pepsi. It's back again, once again, for a limited time only. But it's only it's only Pepsi without the food coloring, but you suckers will buy it anyway. <laughs> I love Crystal Pepsi. Because it it's fun. Is it fizzy? It's still fizzy. It yeah. just looks oh. like it just lo- looks like water now. Uh, next up is our cute co-host, uh, my girlfriend Steph Dalton. Hello. Tonight's broadcast is also brought to you by how much science and uh, laws against nature do we need to be able to resurrect uh, Robin Hood's skeleton to do his job once again over here in the UK in 2017? And I'm not even joking. (laughs) Yeah, I'll just let that sink in. I figured someone might say something, but anyway... And last but not least, we've got Cody Klusner. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first annual Cinema Royale Strip Poker Tournament. All proceeds go to our own pockets. Thank you very much. Woo! Woo! Yay! Yay! Ah, if only. If only. You want to see Cody strip? (laughs) Ah, no. (laughs) Anyways, uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is our 99th episode of the podcast we're one episode away from 100 people um so this episode so who's here. making a cake who's making a cake or more importantly who's getting the champagne <laughs> that's up for debate anybody can do that we haven't planned that out Yay. yet um so this episode we're gonna talk about robin hood um we're talking about the classic character known as robin hood that's been in the uh England folklore, and there's been tons of uh, adaptations of Robin Hood, either on television or on film. We're focused on film, of course. We've got four choices for you guys. We're going to go from the earliest to the somewhat um, latest one, but we're going up to the 90s here. We're not talking about the 2010 Russell Crowe, really sky directed uh, Robin Hood. That's. <laughs> You guys can look that up if you want to. I wouldn't recommend. Or it. not really Robin Hood. It's more like the. It's more like the becoming of the Robin Hood. But anyway, it's an origin story, of course. But let me. Uh... And I, Robin Hood, do not forget my name and my arrow and bow. I shall shoot you through your head, because there's an apple on top. Oh wait, that's the wrong man. <laughs> Hi, and because I'm directed by Ridley Scott. I will be fighting an alien. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Robin Hood with aliens? <laughs> that would be actually pretty badass. That would be interesting. Not at five o'clock in the morning, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so, like I said, I'm going to start first, because I started, I went last last time, so I'll start first this time. Uh, we're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about the 1938 uh, classic with Errol Flynn, known as *The Adventures of Robin Hood*. This is considered to be the best Robin Hood film, uh, apparently by a bunch of critics and a lot of people who enjoy Robin Hood. Um, mind you, at the time of this recording, I've only known uh, the Disney Robin Hood the most. I've not seen any of the Robin Hood adaptations. I've probably seen parodies of it and know of the character, but I never understood, or not understood, but seen another film with Robin Hood. So watching a classic from 1938 um, with Errol Flynn, because Errol Flynn's the uh, classic actor who did the Robin Hood role, he's he's pretty good in this. He's... Because... <laughs> Sometimes you just have to realize that Robin Hood is this hero 
that comes to the rescue during a time where uh, King Richard leaves on a, on a holy crusade and his brother Prince John comes in to rule the country and taxes come through people are getting rid of they have no money there's the food being taken away and it's just in a horrible wreck right now and Robin Hood comes in to find a band of people to you know stop that and uh this is Warner Brothers and I just realized that Warner Brothers has like exclusive rights to Robin Hood because I believe um this film I believe Prince of Thieves is also Warner Brothers um so and even I think even the really Scott one's Warner Brothers as well so um I realized that because Tarzan was the same situation too with Warner Brothers taking the reign for most of their films for Tarzan like Legend of Tarzan Tarzan and the Lost City and of course uh Greystoke so I want to see a crossover between Tarzan and Robin Hood <laughs> Warner Brothers get on that <laughs> Mm, not even <laughs> wrong location, wrong time periods. Me tells on you, Jane. Me tells on you, you Marion. Me tells on you, Jane. Just because I'm wearing tights, mate, doesn't make me a woman. <laughs> <laughs> the 1938 classic, The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring Errol Flynn. It is. If you look at the movie, the stories, you know the story. The story is very con clean cut, simple. It's like, like I said, the, like I said, King Richard leaves for a holy crusade. Prince John comes in, takes over reign, taxes, blah, blah. Robin Hood bands together a lot of people in Nottingham to go against them. Um, you look for characters like Little John, for example. Little John is an uh, interesting character in this because I've, like I said, I've only seen the Disney version of Robin Hood, so I was like imagining Little John to be something else. But I think Little John in this movie, the characteristics are that <coughs> he's the best. Well, here's the thing that I didn't realize. There's a, there's a, there's like a character that's omitted from the Disney one because it's, it's William. William is the like half-brother slash sidekick to Robin Hood. And you see him with a red hat in the movie, like he's like alongside Robin Hood the most of the time before meeting Little John. And of course you assume Little John's like Robin Hood's best mate, but after meeting up for the first time, having like a, a stick brawl on the top of a uh, a tree bridge, you know, they have like a brawl on the bridge, you know, and then Robin Hood falls over and they have a good laugh about it and they become friends. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see that origin going there, seeing that um, this portrayal of Robin Hood kind of th seems like he's not a complete jerk, but he's got, like, this sly cockiness to him, you know, whenever he's, like, trying to come up with a plan or trying to get something going, like, he's, like, he tells, like, like, for example, when he, we first meet Friar Tuck, for example, um, he, uh, takes his mutton chop and, you know, he's like, you want to come with me? You want, I, I, I will, you know, and they start, they started to fight, you know, and then later on it's like, uh, Robin Hood's like, we got plenty of food, you know, we'll get some, some boar, we get this and that, and of course, Friar Tuck's a fatty, ha ha ha, he goes with it because he, he loves food, so, he has a cunning way of actually getting people to join his crew. Mm-hmm. Um... There, I don't think there is a sheriff... Yeah, this is our hero, ladies and gentlemen, uh... <laughs> It's just like, yeah, let's come on. I got food. I've got food. Did he have, a, did he have like a washing? Look? <laughs> what if I got a man, like a scene? You know, like the scene in Tom and Jerry, like when um Tom's trying to like coax Spike asleep, and he's like following the mate on a washing <laughs> line. It's like did it like that, and then you got Jesus trying to wake up for a time. It's like it's fake. You know? Hey, wake up! <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, it's um. Or maybe we got uh, or maybe we got the old uh, fishing pole routine going on. You know, he's on uh, Friar Tuck's shoulders and holding it out in front of him. It's no because <laughs> it's it's because in the point of the movie, uh, Robin Hood has a bunch of people, with little John, William, and everyone else behind him. I think there's another guy they 
uh, have him join like a servant of some sort who killed the royal deer. I can't remember his name. It, it, he's in some parts of the movie. Um, Will Scarlet. Something like that. Um, so, yeah, Friar Tuck is sleeping and he has a mutton chop in his hand. And so he's like, Robin Hood sneaks up, it's like, grabs it, and then it's like, ha ha! You know, and he wakes up, like, give me my mutton chop! Give me my mutton chop, Friar Tuck says. And he's just like, oh no, no. You know, it's just, it's just, this is our hero. It's like, really, Robin Hood, you gotta be, you know, teasing our fat Friar Tuck. But... And then you just throw it towards his, you know, your hideout like a dog. Hey, hey, hey. You want the mutton chop? Fetch! <laughs> and he goes running after it, you know, like a dog. Oh, mm. on all fours. Ha, 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 ha. Yep. In this... Oh, in these movies, how do I think? Okay, which one of these was directed by me? It's this film. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hmm? Directed by who? It's uh, directed by Michael Curtis and William Cayley. Why do you ask? I'm just... They, they do great work because they... Uh, the characters are very well developed. And the, if you look at the settings and the surroundings of it, it looks pretty damn good. Like, the, the, the castle looks amazing. The Shira Forest looks amazing. Like... The way they developed all this elements into it, it looks really good. I don't think there's a sheriff of Nottingham in this version because I think um, John's right hand man is a different. There name. was. Yeah, they just didn't say. Uh, there was. He just. Uh, he just wasn't as as prominent. Huh. I'm probably not as hairy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I believe Frank in this movie was developed by who had the, the mustache and the chin beard. Uh, yeah. That's like you, baby. You got the mustache and the little bit. So we got beard power in this in this uh yeah. podcast. Uh Minus one. She she can play Maid Marian. <laughs> it's it, you know it's very straightforward with this movie. There's nothing really to for me to explain because it's all there. It's there's like what is there? What what did you think of the movie, James? <laughs> Oh, I I like the fact that they that they're able to uh, they're able to tell an exciting romantic swashbuckling story. Uh, swashbuckling. Mm-hmm. Swashbuckling. Was there yes. pirates in this now? Well, sp well, it's swashbuckling uh, includes doesn't... includes like sword fighting, like adventurers kind of people. Pirate. No, Swash. swashbuckling is more than pirates. Okay. Google okay. definition. Oh boy. It's like, you know, you've got the swash, swash, swash of the sea and then the buck, 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 buck of the swords. That's why I was swashbuckling, I thought it was pirates. The swash, okay. swash, swash of the sea and the buck, buck, buck of the sword. So, swashbuckle, verb. In Engage in daring adventures with ostentatious bravado or flamboyance. Yes. So, okay, that definitely works. Um, moving, uh, moving forward. Uh, yeah, this is it's, it's very much. Uh, you can see why this is. With why this is uh, looked back upon as being the first classic Robin Hood story, there were Robin Hood adaptations that came before it, but 
you know, this one, this one was not a silent film. Right. Uh, uh, I had a feeling. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that definitely helps. Uh, going forward, uh, we also have uh, we also have um, the fact that it's it's one of the first ones that had uh, um, um, I think a major studio backing of it behind it. So um, uh, so that's that's all what all that helps. Uh, we have we have something that's very well cast, well directed. I think the the use of color. The use of color in this one, I just want to say it's it's very kind of surreal. Mm-hmm. Just uh, just the way that the Technicolor is used, it's almost as if the the frames are being painted. Oh. Uh, uh. If you and not, it's not. I mean, it's not like looking like an animated movie, but oh. when you if you stop any the frame at any point in the film you're just kind of like okay this is this has a really nice color base to it it could be it could be easily photoshopped you know run a photoshop filter over it and you've got a modern art masterpiece um that's how well it's it stood up the one funny story though that i that i have about watching it is I I checked out the DVD from the library just for this occasion. I ripped the copy. I sent it over to Mike. Oh no! <gasps> what? Yeah. Piracy I... in this podcast? You don't say. Well, he. Uh... <laughs> I never. <laughs> there, there's your pirate stuff. Um... Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> and so uh so I'm watching it and uh there comes a point uh near the end of the story uh King I'm just hearing I'm hearing the music play but for some reason the sound the sound all seems to go dim for uh for whatever reason. I'm just hearing the music. And uh, and so uh, the story goes uh, uh, that um, the real king, uh, uh, Richard, has returned has returned uh, to Nottingham. He, he and Robin Hood confront uh, Prince John and on the throne. And everything was, as they're having this conversation with each other, I'm watching it, and I'm like, Everything is completely silent except for the music. I'm just watching these guys go. And it's the last five minutes of the movie, and I'm watching it like that. And I'm just like, what what happened here? What happened? And then I realized I realized afterward I looked over at the at the audio menu on the DVD, and there's a music only track on the DVD. <laughs> so you can just watch the movie silently and listen to the background music. That's what you want to do, right? Interesting, interesting bonus. Interesting bonus, I will give him that. But, uh, at, so I guess I was watching it on my laptop. Somehow the, somehow the, there must have been a scratch on the, on the DVD and it, it skipped on over to the to the wrong audio track, so I had to rewatch the last five minutes of it uh, with the audio track put in correctly, and it's yeah, it 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 played out like normal. I I think if you want a Robin Hood story that that hits all the all the true marks, the true marks, the ba- the basic. Uh, marks of what a Robin Hood story maintains: meeting, meeting up with the Merry Men. Uh, his uh, before that even his time, uh, his time uh, uh, off warring in the Crusade, which they touch on a little bit in the beginning. Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is one that you, this is one that's a need to watch. I think. 
Yeah. But it's not a particular favorite, I should say. No, I was I believe one of our I believe one of our next ones is gonna be a favorite. <laughs> well yeah, guaranteed. But I wanted to mention that um like I said, if you've only seen one version of it, you, you might see a shocking difference because Maid Marion uh doesn't instantly like fall in love with him. It takes a little time for him to get used to him and actually fall in love with him. Like he's like she's like what's what's this person and what's he's doing like he's like kind of with Prince John at some point and then later on like when she's at uh in the forest with the guys during that raid or that ramp that whatever <coughs> rampage that happened you know she starts to fall in love with her a little bit more and then towards the end of the movie she's like ah oh, I love him so much and it's just like okay. That's a great development of a character, you know, because you actually fall out with somebody over time. That and that's that's why I think the writing works here. It also doesn't help to have another Duchess fall in love with someone else in the in the Merry Men too. So, mm, ooh, yes. plot point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another. Well, not a Duchess, but another another fair maiden. It's. I believe this, her name is Bess. I believe in the movie. It's it's um that one character that's probably prominent in all the adaptations of Robin Hood, along with me, Marion. Um, but yeah, this is I mean, there's nothing else. Marion's to... best friend, we'll call her. Yeah, she goes by many names. That's true. The human version of Lady Cluck. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, this is like. I don't have a stigma like it's classics, but, but this is just a true blue classic of Robin Hood. You know, this is the definition of Robin Hood. So, um, later on, we're jumping quite a bit from 38 to the early 70s to when Disney did their version of Robin Hood. Yes, mm -hmm. um, this is um, in the beginning of the 70s this is about three years after the Aristocats uh, came out and I think this is probably one of the first projects that Disney did without Walt Disney's approval and stuff like that and I think I may remember rightly I think some of the artwork was actually inspired by the original art concept for a film they were going to do, which was The Tale of Chanticleer, but unfortunately they scrapped that for The Sword of the Stone and that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, with this... And The Tale uh, of Chanticleer became Rockadoodle. Uh, <laughs> it's been a downfall. Rockadoodle. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, how should we um, talk about this film? Shall we talk about this film just plot by plot, or shall we use the drunk Disney? Well, oh my god oh geez. I, I say I, I say we we wing it you know okay because so this one this one has nostalgia written all over it okay, uh -oh. okay so, uh, basically i should explain mike showed me something um which was basically drunk disney and they did it um you know they watched uh Robin Hood. And one thing they said is, okay, every time the British stereotype comes up, we take a shot. And that was quite an interesting one. So, we meet our, our merry players and whatever. And we meet uh, our main characters like the roaster, who tells the story and sings the songs, played by Roger Miller. And well, with Alan that, Adele, I should say. Alan Adele. Ah. And his job was to tell it like it is. Or it was. Or whatever. So anyway, and, and he get... gave birth to the hamster dance. <laughs> so anyway, um, he gives us a little whistle song that turns into the hamster dance. Thank you, James. And um, we get introduced to all our other characters, and then we finally get our first song, which is "Ooh you know, where Robin Hood and Little John walk through the forest, laughing back and forth what the other had to say, and just showing how you know they like to talk about one and then the chef comes along posse and then you know they managed to escape so then they're chatting in a tree and everything and then all of a sudden prince john turns up in his wonderful golden carriage 
So, Robin Hood and Little John have an idea to get the money so they can give it to the poor. First British stereotype coming up here, cross-dressing. <laughs> Seriously, you Americans need to get into pantomimes. It's like, oh, is this a British stereotype of cross-dressing and stuff? It's like, well, number one, yeah, but it's not just that. There's a purpose to the cross-dressing. It's called pantomime. You know, when you have a mm-hmm. pantomime game, it's always played by a man. Mm-hmm. So anyway, they go to find um, whatever. And of course, we get introduced to Prince John and um, to Hiss. And of course, as uh, Prince John said, to go in a phrase, my dear counsellor, rob the poor to feed the rich. <laughs> yeah, it seems quite weird to hear that in a rob head, but <laughs> it's not like it's happening over here anyway. Uh, anyway. The... Uh... Uh, obviously the uh, obviously he's uh, got that got that concept backwards for a, a preachy reason as yeah. we uh, but um, I'd like to back point out in, hmm? sorry, back in 1973 funny over here in 2017 true preach <laughs> mm-hmm. but the one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna point out about this one because see I love this movie when I was I loved this movie when I was uh, when I was a kid watching it. And I think, yeah, my brother got this uh, for his birthday one time when we were kids, and this was one of my this was one of my uh, all time uh, all time favorites for a while. I I preferred it over the Jungle Book, um, particularly. Uh, I acknowledge that uh, it's. The th- it's one of the three times Phil Harris and Willie Reitherman worked together on a on a, a project. Uh, but I but I also find it enter- entertaining uh, to to realize this is uh, this is uh, one of the uh, this is one of the most recycled classics uh, in oh, the yeah. Disney animation canon. I mean, there. Uh, if uh, if there's a if there's a good way to 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 look at the animation in this uh, in this film, it's pretty much it's pretty much uh, budget strip, budget strip, budget strip. You will be surprised at how many at how many very well done walk cycles are are repeated, and how many or how many different uh, movements and dance. And dance routines are completely uh, collab- collaborated or, or taken from other projects. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, with um, this film, um, I never realized certain things until I actually watched the film again for the podcast. Because, like you, James, this was quite a popular film for us. Uh, my parents reviewed it on a VHS along with uh, Weird the Pyramid of the or Ants or the Stone. In fact, I also actually have a, a proper copy of the VHS. And it is very recycled in certain places, like, you know, walk cycle, dance sequences and stuff. Um, but in a way, it's quite nice to know that this is actually a cult classic that actually did very well when it was first released. It was very, uh, you know, it, it, it went down well with the critics and did well at the box office and stuff. But nowadays, it is an absolute, bless you, it is an absolute cult classic now. But mm-hmm. the one scene that everybody talks about, which is the phone of King of England. <clears throat> I'll talk about um, songs in a minute. Where basically, it is practically about 85 to probably about like 90 to 95% recycled animation. And if you're like a hardcore Disney fan, you know where they recycle stuff from. Like Snow White, the Aristocats, uh, Jungle Book, Uh, Why do I think there's another one? <laughs> I think there's another one in in there somewhere. But we're yeah. yeah this is particularly for the this is particularly though for the at the for the character movement and the and the and the dance numbers. Uh, not counting uh, not count not counting the uh, the the Punch and Judy puppet routine that's going on, of course. <laughs> So anyway, uh, one of my favourite aspects of this film, and I guess I kind of 
you know, really liked it as a kid or whatever, and actually really appreciate now, is the songs. Uh, some of them were written by, um, performed by Roger Miller, who played um, Aladeo. Um, you've got Uda Lally, which, you've got the whistle song, which is a fantastic credit song. Um, you've got Uda Lally, which perfectly sets up uh, Little John, sorry, Robin Hood and Little John, very well to kind of give a little bit of their characters. Mm-hmm. And then you've got trying to think what the next one is. Uh, got actually I think there's like a huge gap in something. Yeah. And then you've got Love, which is a fantastic song, which actually, fun fact, it got nominated for an Oscar. Um and I have to say recently that's become a bit of a guilty pleasure for like Disney Love songs. Um you know, and whilst watching the film with my cages go, I did get a little bit teary. So lovely, lovely. And of course, I got a bit teary eyed when Robin Hood was about to lose his head. You know, it's like, and Mike was like, oh, baby. It's like, well, I just imagine myself in that scenario. You're like, like if I had, if I was, if I knew I was going to lose you right in front of me by having your head locked off, you know, that sort of thing. I just think it might be decent. And, um, trying to think what other songs are out. Oh, the weirdest thing I never got as a kid is the fact that you go from one song straight into another. Because as soon as you've done Love, there's a couple of lines, and then you go straight into The Finding King of England, which is a fantastic song. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the genre is. It's probably quite rock and rolly with a little bit of kind of maybe jazz thrown in there, but it's a fun song, you know? And uh, I call it show tunes, that's all. All right. <laughs> anyway, after that, um, you realise that, you know, he's been, you know, Prince John's been humiliated. Um, hey. Hey. Episode, episode one. Hey. 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 Sorry. You have the song Not in Nottingham, which is another one that was written by Roger Miller. And Country tune. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a good song, actually, you know, when you think mm-hmm. about it. And Every town has its ups and downs. Sometimes ups, I love the downs. I'm not in Nottingham. <laughs> no. Yeah, and so then I, so, I think that's the last song of the film. But yeah. do, do you want me to talk about the other two songs that are featured in this movie? Do you remember the two songs that I told you about? Oh, they they do sing "Happy Birthday" at one point, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not not friend to that one, but here, let me let me get a little detail to you. Um, first off, I love this film to bits. Like, I grew up with this film. This is like one of my favorites. Um, anyways, there's a scene in the movie where there's that big old brawl after the um archering contest and lady cluck starts to do the thing <laughs> with the 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 guards and so two songs pop up she is the fat one <laughs> there's there's two songs that pop up and these are uh orchestra uh, like orchestrated uh, f- uh fight songs for colleges so one of them is uh, mm-hmm. fight on from the university of southern california and the other one is on O Wisconsin from University of Wisconsin. So you got a couple of, uh, and that's why you have that whole routine that comes in and feels very much like a, it feels very much like a, a football game. What happens next? Exactly. Which is amazing. Exactly. <laughs> it's really good. I, I, I looked it up. And I was like, oh, that's right. That is our uh, our fight song for the University of Wisconsin. I was like, oh. Yeah. I could just uh, basically, uh, one other thing I was—I I knew I started out, but was like, um, but I kind of like didn't quite cover it. Uh, was that there's a lot of things that I managed to make connections with in this film that I never did before because I was just watching. Like when the reward for Robin Hood gets put up, I didn't realize that was because Prince John had ordered it after he got robbed. You know, in the. Mm-hmm. Um, in the carriage. I thought it always been around. And then... That was... Uh, uh, wow, she's... It's, <laughs> it's gone! It's 
so god, you know? So anyway, like, when the, uh, actually, another thing I want to cover is, like, because like, I spoke about the couple of British stereotypes that drunk Disney food brought up. Also, they had the one of, um, well, they did a special drink for the fact that most of the actors in it were American, and they only had, like, I think at most three English actors. Um, and then they had the British stereotype of bad food. Fuck off, our food's good. Um... <laughs> You know, I mean, we're the nation of Cadbury, you know? Um, and then, oh god, what was the other? Oh, yeah, stealing money from the poor to give to the rich. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, oh, yeah, that's great. It's not like it's that, yeah. Yeah, it's so, funny. So... It's just... Hmm? What? I just had a... Oh, oh, I can hear myself. Can... Oh. Echo. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think this. Uh, after rewatching this film myself and and looking at the other Robin Hood adaptations, I must say there are some there are some interesting things that are done very very differently here <coughs> uh, that still that still make it work. Uh, traditionally, a Robin Hood story, when it starts out, uh, uh, it shows it shows him uh, becoming uh, becoming the the Prince of Thieves, you know, after the uh, after the Crusades, coming home, and whatnot. And here we start right uh, we start right in the middle of his of his reign as a as a thief. Oh, oh, yeah! Like you, you, you're there like no. Well, it'd be hard to explain, to kids. Kids, Disney's gonna teach us about the holy wars. Isn't that gonna be fun? Wait, wait, wait! Could, could, could you just go through that whole business again, like Prince of Thieves? Bit? So, okay, <laughs> what traditionally Sorry. a traditionally a Robin. Traditionally, a Robin Hood story, like the one that, like the one that Mike and I uh, saw, starts out with him uh, being a soldier in the Crusades, uh, ends up getting captured, ends up uh, ends up coming home uh, to England to find out that his people need him uh, more, and then becoming a Prince of Thieves over time. This movie launches him right in the middle, launches with him right in the middle. Uh, with him already being established as a as a, a thief with Little John, and and think about this also: there are no other merry men in the in in this uh, in this version. Exactly, I was gonna say that there's stark differences between the Errol Flynn film and this version because, if, like like I said, it was. Like I said, I've only seen this version before seeing the Arrow Flynn version. And I, uh, my eyes, my, my mind just poof, because Little John is uh, Robin Hood's mates throughout the whole thing. Even though in the original, uh, you have William, who is his right hand man. You don't even see that character in the in the Disney one whatsoever. Then, uh, actually, I should have mentioned this earlier that you don't actually see Robin Hood stealing anything in the original movie. You never see Robin Hood steal anything. Oh. They they say he stole some stuff. But you don't see. Uh... <laughs> they, they, they say. And you oh. don't see little John giving himself a a boob job with some coins, just to, like holler out the bottom of it. No, no, no. Why no. did you try that? You know, it's like you know. No, that's what like, I want. Like all bets bring all the coins to the yard, and then like. <laughs> I. It's just. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting watching the original because it's like they don't, sh they, they 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 don't ever see Robin Hood and this Merry Men stealing anything. That's the thing. Even though in this version you see, you just, they just tell you. They just say be like like it's off screen. Like I've been robbed by this guy named Robin Hood, you know, and they don't actually see it. So in this version, Disney clearly shows Robin Hood and Little John doing stealing the most. Firstly, the scene where they meet Little John, uh, Prince. Uh, Prince, Prince John. John, yeah. So 
the other thing I noticed too is that and his relationship with Maid Marian is already established. Like, there's a past between Maid Marian and Robin Hood in the Disney film. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it makes sense for them to meet up again and suddenly be like completely rekindled with each other because, of course, they they haven't forgotten each other over the years. Exactly. As I uh, said, it's like the said, absence makes. Something like that. Uh, and one yeah. of my one of my other favorite scenes in, Rob, in this Robin Hood is when um, the kids go to see. Um, <coughs> go to Maid Marian. Um, yeah, and they start laughing about weather. It's like brilliant fun. And actually, uh, yeah. I realized I think there was something I was going to do ages ago, and I thought about doing it as a tonight's broadcast was literally to get you to do the oath. If you guys remember it. Spiders, snakes, and lizard heads. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Gotta put your hand on your heart and cross your eyes first. Spiders, yeah. snakes, and a lizard's head. Spiders, snakes, and lizard's head. If I tattletale, I'll die till I'm dead. If I tattletale, I'll die till I'm dead. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the kid... What this movie... What this movie does <laughs> is... What this movie lacks in classic Robin Hood story tropes, it makes up for in, yes, Skippy and his gang of of, uh, of friends there. Put your head in your eye and crush your eyes. It's like a... <laughs> I mean... It's, it's like uh It's like the... It's like uh, the little rascals invaded the the story of Robin Hood. It's... Okay. That's Think a, about it. It is. It's true. And then, so you got the other, fan- you got the other, the fantastic other joke with uh, Prince John. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, and of course, Sir His has his own um, running uh, gag. Well, actually, I think it happens about twice. Well, basically, it's like I told you, I just, I tried to warn you, but no, no, you wouldn't listen. But ah, 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 seven years man. Fast with this. Besides. Just broke your mother's mirror, and then at the end, it's like, Well, I tried to tell you, but no, no, you just wouldn't listen. Your traps just never work, and now look what you've done to your mom's castle. <laughs> yeah, springs up, mom again. I want to point out does anyone else, does it, does anyone else, uh, note it, note the fact that every time Prince John, uh, twists up, uh, Sir His's neck, he, al- he always does it in a way that's technically impossible. believe this, but the stalk is actually Robin Hood. Robin Hood. <laughs> Get out of that if you can. <laughs> he's he's nodding him up with uh, by holding him at both ends of the rope with uh, with both hands at all times. You cannot do that. There is no physically possible way to do this, but he is such a... Oh, no, no, it's... it's Disney. Anything can happen in Disney films. Anything, is it? Disney. Oi. Yeah, it's um. Mhm. The the kids, I mean, there's the the youngest, the youngest in the fucking group. Really, I mean, the the, the child actor was a, a little kid, and you can't even understand the kid half the time. I swear, I'm sorry, that's a little pet peeve of mine. That kid was just like. Why is that kid in the movie like? I don't know. I think I you. It's just. Mama it's said you and Robin Hood with sweet hoats. Am I your medals? <laughs> yeah, just like because it's so cute. Yeah, yeah she is cute. You just want to pick her up and snuggle her, like mm. with you and me, babe. Like how I'm so cute. You just want to pick me up and snuggle me. <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah, that's it. I should hug him and squeeze him and George. Yeah. I can't squeeze him and call him George. The interesting thing about this film, actually, it has the alternate ending. Yeah. Mm. Oh, do, oh, do tell us about this. Do tell us. Uh, it's in the with it. The, yeah, the alternate ending, which you can actually watch on the DVD uh, Most Wanted Edition of Robin Hood. It's also on YouTube, if you can find it. It's... 
if I remember correctly, I'm trying to remember what that was. Um, it's a much Robin dark. Hood, Robin Hood is wounded. Sorry, Robin Hood is wounded. L Little John goes to kill Robin Hood, but doesn't succeed. Then King Richard comes back. Fun fact: uh, Peter Peter off did do the voice of Prince John and King Richard. It took me so many years to realise that, or after Mike told me. And then it was, oh, yeah, so King Richard comes back and says, you've used the throne and crown to do bad stuff, you're a dickhead. And uh, well, he doesn't call him a dickhead, you know. Oh. Like, imagine if Disney did that. Oh. You, sir, are a dickhead. And then uh, uh, Robin survives, spoiler alert. Robin Hood and May Marion get married. Spoiler alert. Everyone is happily ever after. Spoiler alert. And actually, one thing I just want to quickly say is that one thing I realised is that this is probably the only Disney film where the villains do not die. I mean, I quote me if I'm wrong. You are. The rescuers and Medusa didn't die. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Zootopia, that she didn't die. <laughs> um, I haven't seen Zootopia, but oh yeah, yeah, the, the rescue is better than just die. But yeah, uh, Robert, because uh, um, yeah, you have um, Sheriff Nottingham, Sir Hurston, Prince John in, in prison, you know, in a traditional jail where, and then you got like Trigger going, I was like, hey, cut the ride, <laughs> straight into the heart. Well, folks. James and Robin's back. What? <laughs> I was about to say, it's like, and well, folks, that's the way it really happened. Because that's the, that's the one thing they sort of claim is the fact that we in the animal kingdom have our own version. And this is the story of what really happened. It's like, I so hope that. Yes, it really happened this way with, uh, uh, <laughs> with talking animals. Uh I'd like to say the one creepy thing I found about that ending is that one little rabbit kid actually goes with Robin and Marion on their honeymoon. I was like, like, uh, this is going to turn into a furry version of the room, right? He's just walking on them. Let's play. Well, Robin is probably going to have kids. So somebody's going to look out for them. Okay. It's a fun, it's a fun version. It still holds up. Um... Oh yeah, so and many quotable things there. Mm -hmm. and, and you know and what? Especially the fact that they used a real. Oh, you got the... it all wrong, Hester. Sniveling, groveling, wheezing. Enough. <laughs> one one thing that always impressed me was uh, the one moment where Friar Tuck is ringing the church bell. I, I was always amazed at a, at a kid. I was I was sort of thinking, is this this is supposed to be animated? That bell looks incredible, whatnot. They actually filmed a a, a real bell and stuck it in there. Uh, so that's what you're seeing. I mean, it did look a little bit like a real bell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks and like a real bell because it is a real bell. <gasps> Realism in an animated movie? No. Oh, oh it could have been, or it could have been CGI. You never know. Mm. <laughs> and good CGI thing... in like 1973. No. Disney did no magic. It did <laughs> suck hot. The the good thing for you Robin Hood fans out there who love this film, the soundtrack is coming to you guys for the first time ever. You could get it. Through your, mm -hmm. you can get it as MP3 or you get a CD of it. Yes, you could finally hear the soundtrack in all its glory, for the first time this year. <laughs> all of, all of George Brun's uh, amazing score, uh, which you could only hear previously on the, uh, in pirated versions where they just cheaply, uh, where they just uh, cheaply took the movie soundtrack out, and all you could hear. <laughs> yes. Do you remember when you showed me that and it was like <laughs> you could still hear the voices in the background it's like oh god it's terrible um, <laughs> you can hear yes all of George Brun's uh, how, how is it how is it that a guitar of all instruments works so incredibly on this on this score 
<laughs> is it because of the time period it was it was made in? They they got that, that guy going and crazy on the on the guitar during the chase scenes. Oh, like, I forgot that they have um his oh um Alladale yeah Alladale's um loot in Finding King of England at one point turns into an electric guitar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in a world of very rock and birds. I don't think this is a Serbian question. Just, just ignore it and move on. Yeah. I realize this is the second time I faced the podcast. <laughs> I'll have my mind blown now. Okay. But yeah, this is, well, def- this is definitely a Disney film you have to check out if you have not seen already. Yes! Millennials, get onto it! <laughs> Mm-hmm. So let's... this is just setting into a running gag, isn't it? it it's gonna be now. Um, <laughs> let's jump a little. Where's for... Debbie when you need her? Oh, she she actually died. There's no Debbie anymore. What? Debbie's gone. But, but, but... Yeah, I... Debbie Dunn died. Yep, yeah, Debbie is uh, long gone. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm no, Debbie's... Debbie. Nope, Debbie's. Nope, nope. Deb... Debbie. Debbie's gone. <laughs> Yeah, finally, Devin's wish came true. Devin, Debbie is uh, long gone. Uh, I'm having worse than that, bitch. So we I'll jump. Be fine. I'll be fine. So we jump forward to the '90s, and one of two came out in '91, and we're gonna talk about Prince of Thieves. Take it away, Cody. All right. Let me just say first, the first two movies I do enjoy. Quite fondly, Disney over Earl Flynn. But if you want a bit more of a darker, but not completely Russell Crowe type Robin Hood, this is the one you should be seeing. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves came out in 91, the year of my birth. And even though I've seen all of them for this podcast, this one remains my personal favorite. Mm. Mm. Even if you're skeptical about Kevin Costner as an actor, trust me. This movie has a bunch of, like, a shit ton of other stuff that will distract you from him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good to know. And, like many others, this movie opens up with a tech... Well, not really. Not with a tech scroll, but with, like, a medieval cross stitch, I'm guessing is the Third Crusade, mm-hmm. accompanied by an awesome movie score done by Michael Caine, and his music about this movie is anything but... Wow. Is that Michael Caine as in the actor? Michael Caine. Yes. <laughs> no. Michael Caine. No, Michael, <laughs> Michael Caine. Cayman. Michael Caine. Cayman. The, the, late, the, late, the late Michael Cayman. I thought he said Michael Caine. That's what Ca- I heard. Cayman. <laughs> Cayman. Common. Anyways. Anyways, the movie goes from the opening credits to <laughs> Jerusalem. Where we see Robin in a torture chamber where other fellow members of the crusade are getting their hands cut off by a hot red iron Arabian blade. Mm. Oh. Yeah. This is the butch version right <laughs> off the bat. I, I haven't seen this movie in so many years. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> but I, I just remember we actually watched this in, in history class. Really? Uh yeah, in middle in middle school. What? The only movie I watched in middle school was about in science class for the weather, and that was the day after tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's about as accurate. Um, <laughs> Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, uh, to history class, is about as accurate as day after tomorrow is to science class. Think about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But one's more fun than the other. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, as you look among the other prisoners who look like ZZ Top's fan club, you see actually <laughs> one of them. You see actually one of them. You look close up. Is in fact Kevin Costner. And as he is getting ready, and it's someone else is getting ready to get their hand taken, he steps up and says, "No, let me do it. I'm going to do this." And he actually volunteers to have his hand cut off. And he's like, no, this is English courage. It's like, yeah, you're English, sure. Oh, when you said that he volunteers to do it, I thought you were going to say he volunteered to chop the hand off. It's like, no, 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 I'll do it. No, I don't no know. he volunteered to get his <laughs> cut off. 
<laughs> Wait, sorry. Wear the cut off? off your hand if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, yeah, but it's hey, barbaric. it's home. It's home. <laughs> Wait, did you say? Like, what? What did they chop? Like, what were they going to chop off? Like, yeah, yeah, because he, um, because he took the blame for stealing a loaf of bread. Stealing a loaf of bread, Jules, definitely means amputation. Wow. The holy land, ladies and gentlemen. But, hey. I stole a loaf of bread. Please clear my name. <laughs> oh! I'm <laughs> not Javert. That's making no call back to Aladdin. All this for a loaf of bread? Exactly. So anyway, shenanigans ensues. He escapes, but he, tr he actually tries. He tries to feel free his other fellow comrades, but they're all chained up. And the only one he can save is... Another Moore, played by Morgan Freeman, named Asim, who's only tied up with straps to the walls. Like, really? All these other guys, you got changed because they're strapped him with rope? rope? Oh, okay. Maybe they ran out of chains or something. I don't know. Like, they were overcrowded. It's like, what are we going to do? I'll just take your belt off. <laughs> so he frees, uh, he frees Azim. His name's Azim. And he actually becomes Robin Hood's best friend. It's not Little John or... You know, uh, what's his name? Will Scarlet, you know. But they are in the movie. They come in later on. But back in Nottingham, we do not have a Prince John. We have the Sheriff, played by the always beautiful of performances. <laughs> oh, Alan Rickman, who I swear to God, every time Robin Hood pisses off the Sheriff in this movie, Alan just cranks up the ham more and more. It's such interesting. It is such a fantastic performance. I thought you were going to say the mo you know, performed by the beautiful Rick, uh, like Alan Rickman, like you know, <laughs> whatever tickles your fancy, Cody. <laughs> I, I, I want to watch this movie again just for Alan Rickman's sake, because yeah, yeah, again, if you anything, watch it for Alan Rickman. I remember favorite, line, favorite line of the movie is from him when Robin Hood pisses him off. He's like, "Cancel all food scraps for lepers and orphans. No more muscle beheadings." And call off Christmas. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Aww. <laughs> anyway. No. <laughs> no Christmas. No. Mm. No. You cannot cancel Christmas. No, no cancel Christmas. Anyway. But I get it for I get it for a joke in the film, but anyway. Anyway, back in England, the sheriff has rounded up all the other lords of Nottingham. And they want him to join him to go against the king in Satanism. Yay! I just want to say, before we go any further, does yeah. this mean we get to... Does this, does this mean this version of, uh, of, uh, of the Sheriff of Nottingham gets to, have, uh, gets to be visited by three ghosts? No, but the woman who raised him was a witch, and she was... Wow! Uh, played by played by Grendlin McEwen, and if you look at a picture of her for any period, then you look at her in this movie, it's like, what the fuck did the production team do to you? What the hell? You Even sound... This... Hey? Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, I cleared her up. <laughs> you say that, like, they basically tried to override the king with Satanism. Did they sacrifice Brian... Adams, that was it. Did they sacrifice Brian Adams to the devil? No, but they did frame Robin's father for Satanism and burned down his house and hung him in one of those iron casket things to leave him as a corpse. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Robin come, finally comes home to England, and, you know, Azim comes with him because he swore a vow to Robin to save his life, which apparently is a running joke in this movie because if ever he's saving, there's either something not... it doesn't happen till the end. So Robin comes home to see that his whole world has turned upside down. Everything's not what it should be, so he goes off to see Marion, Maid Marion, played by Mary Elizabeth. I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name. Have at it, you guys. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and seeing how this was 91, we're still coming off the roll of the 80s. She's one of those Ah, I'm a I'm a girl. I can fend for myself. I can live out here out of the safety of Nottingham. Gets captured in the end, and the sheriff tries to rape her, literally. 
Yeah, he tries to marry her. He's like, no, nah, yes, get over this. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see them in the Sherwood Bar where they meet the rest, the rest of the John and Will Scarlet, played by Christian Slater. <clears throat> Kevin Costner and Christian Slater. Wow. My goodness, this is a this is a <laughs> a casting of ham actors right here. Yes. Well, I will say this. I will say this. Christian Slater, in my opinion, does give a better performance in this movie than. Coster, though, even though I can still enjoy this movie. Mm. So, and another thing I can say, the location shots in this movie are anything short of actual beautiful. I mean, they did go to France to get, you know, if you need, like, castles and manors from that era, they went there. But everything else was shot in the forests all over England, and it is just amazing. Why would they go to, like, France for castles? I mean, we've got castles. Apparently, France looks better than... I don't know. I didn't direct the movie. Bloody French. Sorry. Hey, blame Kevin Reynolds. He directed. Because Bloody France looks so old-fashioned now, I guess. Yeah, who knows. But anyway, this leads into everything else. You know, Robin stealing from the rich. Actually, stealing from the lords of Nottingham, who who were supposed to give money to the sheriff to pay him off. You know, saying, stay with Satanism. We got money. Isn't that the vow that Donald Trump took when he became president? I got money. Oh, <laughs> that makes way too much fucking sense. Just saying. And of course, this leads into the climax of the movie where they have explosions. And it actually, yeah, explosions, and it actually makes sense because Azim actually does near the end of the money, discover, you no, know, figure out how to make gunpowder, and they thought, oh, okay, we're going to use this. We're in 91. We're still living off the high of the 80s. We have to have explosions. <laughs> I was just thinking, you said, like, oh, probably Donald Trump took that thing, like, you know, become president, I have money. I think yeah. that happened with Theresa May, too, so. No! That was why I was stuck with her. <laughs> and you know what gave her the money? Probably, you know, the DUP. This is come join you, and I'll give you some money. Yes. So anyway, the final battle has Kevin Costner going against Alan Rickman in swordplay, which isn't half bad. <coughs> Marion gets a couple of shots in at some point. <laughs> but Azim's going up against the witch, and I'm sitting there going, you cannot make this look real. But you have a hunchback, ugly old blog, going up against freaking Morgan Freeman, <laughs> playing, playing a warrior of the... <laughs> war, playing a fallen warrior of the Crusades, like... No, no. And she just goes at him. She's like, he has a spear, and she just goes, Ah! I was like, Jesus, woman. She just stabs her. And she walks away with a spear stuffed straight through her. It's like, wow. Thank you. Ooh, and anyway, wow. and in the end, Marion and Robin actually do get married by Friar Tuck, of all people. <laughs> who was left, who was uh, Played by earlier in the... <laughs> <laughs> who was earlier in the film uh, uh, put in a harness. Whose shtick in this movie is, he likes beer. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he did want to have a badass moment when he pushed the bishop out the window. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then King Richard returns, played by the awesomeness that is Sean Connery. Good God, why couldn't the movie just be about him and the Crusades? That would have been awesome. Well, he was already in, uh, he already did Robin and Marianne, so he was, it, it would have just been. <laughs> but anyway, in a nutshell, uh, I'd highly recommend this movie to anyone. No CGI, all practical effects, a lot of kind of creepy imagery, some blood work is involved, a lot more than should be in a PG-13 movie, but all good fun, great music, not good. Underestimate that enough. I mean, God, it's orgasmic at times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even Brian Adams? Yeah, hard to tell. Don't tell me there's no word for him. Yes, that is a good song. And, and, Cayman actually did work that song into the overall orchestral score at times, which is a nice touch. You know? Wait a minute, that song came from this movie? Yes. It was 
It, yeah. Yes, it was, it was written for this movie. Yes. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. If you, if you, if you, if you <laughs> anyone who watches this podcast has the VHS copy of this movie, they play the music video during the ending credits. Why they don't do it on DVD is anyone guess. It's been that long since I've seen it. That's why I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I will say Brian Adams is a Canadian national treasure. Mm-hmm. I thought he was American. He's Canadian. I like Jim Carrey's Canadian. What? Yes, Jim Carrey's Canadian. <laughs> what? Well, I didn't think Brian Adams was like British at one point, but you know. And, and Seth Rogen, he's a Canadian too. But there is one more and thing. And Matthew I, Perry. There is one more thing I like to say about this movie. There is, in fact, an extended version that delves that has more Alan Rickman in it, so that alone's worth it. But it actually goes more into his past, you know, why he's a Satanist. And it actually turns out that the witch in the movie is, in fact, his mother. Which you have to wonder who in the hell fucked that thing? I mean, good <laughs> God. They have a better chance of Elephant Man than that woman. <laughs> Who lays that? Uh... <laughs> and you have to think, from that woman came Alan Rickman. Wow. The father must have been drunk and blind off his ass. Oh, just did it with his eyes closed? <laughs> no, no, no. Even with her voice. Her... <laughs> if she were to moan in that voice, you're like, I can't do it. No, I can't do it. <laughs> you pervert. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So anyway, Robin lost the sex but gained a boner. So any that's made Devin stay careful. (laughs) So anyway, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, everything. If you're not a fan of Kevin Costner, the whole rest of the movie makes up for that in various, many glorious ways. You you know, you know why he didn't do an English accent in the movie, right? Came straight from the airport, putting his tights on in the limousine. <laughs> he can't do an English accent. <clears throat> Kevin Costner wanted to use an English ac- accent, but Kevin Reynolds didn't want him to. Supposedly, Co- Costner would affect the accent when he was arguing with uh, Reynolds, but not when they were in agreement. Costner claims that he was initially asked to use an accent hired a dialect coach, but this was stopped and the coach was fired when he did it poorly. Yeah, I don't think we want to repeat of Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. <laughs> oh, that's I'm a guilty pleasure accent for me. Come on, Azzy, let's go! <laughs> I mean, even James could do a better English accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to get my English accent out again? Oh. Oh. oh dear. Now you see why I'm considered her second boyfriend. I mean, most of the time. To- I mean, I mean, most of the time. Oh, Mikey got it. burned. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, most of the time when he does it, it's just so neutral. It's like an American not trying to be posh or cockney or anything. It's just so. Oh. What if I tried to do my Ringo Starr impression? Or which one of the Beatles is this anyway? I lose. Oh, go back to the first one. Go back to the first one. I lose the rack. I say, bit of bad luck. Uh, so yes, let's round this off with uh, a f- with a film that encompasses all these films into one, basically, which is Mel Brooks's Robin Hood Men in Tights. Women, manly men, women, tight, tight, tight. Oh, the stories do I, the stories do I have to tell about this one? Yes, I, I did re-rent this uh, from the library recently just to see how well it, uh, how well it stood up, and I've always considered it one of the, uh, along with the Disney Robin. Personally, it's always this has always been one of the more memorable versions of the story because again, I watched it as a kid, but. Man, did I, man, did I miss a lot? Cause it's, uh, it, I didn't realize it was PG thirteen. So somebody mis mis mislisted that this thing as PG, and I, that's how I got to see it. But my gosh, a lot of the jokes make sense now. Although I do, although I do quite understand the chastity belt deal. <laughs> um, I, I, got one, I got one of the 
giant crawling for my head was, uh, I think it was the shark kept trying to get me back his chest, chest is like a rodent, and she's just shaking about how you're not gonna get it on me, I'm here for Robin. Actually, my favorite line in that, in that, uh, in that, in that particular sequence is Richard Reese as the sheriff of Nottingham. He says, "Rats, that's going to chafe my willy." <laughs> but I'm, I'm watching this movie again. Okay, so I I can see I can see why I can see why critics hate this. I don't think I don't think it's a bad movie. Uh, but I do see a lot of the char- a lot of the charm, a lot of the charm that uh, that Mel Brooks brought to his parodies. He always said, "What you you only love what you you only spoof what you love" or something like that. And that worked. That's what worked with Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, uh, Spaceballs, etc., etc., etc. Here's where I I thought the I thought the comedy aspect of this film was starting to was feeling flat just a little bit because there were there were moments where uh, the humor was very repetitious from other previous uh, Mel Brooks movies, like uh, you know in the fight scene one per uh, a crew member getting injured or something like that. Uh, that that happened in Spaceballs also. Uh... Or, when Betty um, Mary's in the bar, she's singing a song I love for Robin Hood, and then the window smashes, and it was a camera. Oh yeah, because the the camera's <laughs> yes, like the going, cameras, in, going in, yes, going in, going in, into and then, the window and the other uh, shots. Sh- Those are the jokes that are all the. Mm-hmm. Oh, like the beginning scene. It's like, how can they uh, always do a Robin Hood film? Our house is set on fire. Leave us alone, Mel Brooks. Oh, the, the opening. <laughs> yeah, the opening credits is just amazing. That is the line. This is a this, this this is a quotable movie. I like the. Oh, like, oh, the where what the, about the <laughs> where the comedy works? It works, and I think uh, as. There, okay, so there's a there's a few recycled jokes that do work. Uh, like, you know, Mel Brooks comes in at one point and says it's good to be the king, which is an obvious reference to uh, History of the World Part One. Uh, but I I uh, I always particularly enjoyed the uh, modern appliances gags in this film. Modern and that's appliances. yes, where they suddenly. Uh, where they they suddenly do something uh, like uh, uh, like uh, the like a, like a did over there. let me talk let me talk <laughs> okay. uh, like the like the castle gates uh, being being controlled by a, a garage door opener <laughs> or uh, or how about um, uh, the 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 arrow that Robin Hood uses during the tournament uh, is a is a seeker it's, it's a patriot arrow it's a seeker arrow. <laughs> Those exist. Those are real. I don't think there is. I I don't think I I looked it up. I was like I I think this is an actual thing. But you know it's uh it it's like a it. It, it well more or less it's a reference to the Patriot missile, I think. But I think, I think one of my favourite jokes in um in the tournament scene was when uh, Robin Hood's like because he thinks he's lost and everything, and then he pulls out a script. He's like, yeah, hey, yes, I get another go. And I, everyone pulls out their scripts. It's like, oh yeah, he does. Wait, wait, does he get another go? Hang on a minute. Oh yeah, he does get another guy. That 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 made me laugh. I, I was actually watching it with Steph, and I was just laughing my ass off during that bit. He's like, pull out the script next and see what happens next. I've I've seen that. That's that's where the that's where I'm a little picky. I've seen the the script gag done so many times. Hell, I've even done it. But uh, I I I I don't know. It's a it's a nitpick, 
and I'm a and I'm a hypocrite for harping on that. But uh, I like I I also enjoyed since I got it on DVD, looking at the spe- looking at one of the behind the scenes special features. Here's a fun fact for you. Um, Carrie Elwes was not originally cast as uh, as Robin Hood for this. Originally, they brought on Richard Lewis, the actor who portrays Prince John in the movie. Oh, okay. Yes, who was also... Actually, at that time, he was an established comedian. I think he was on a TV show, but I forget which. Uh, I um, can't think of it either. So, they come in, and they, they brought in Carrie Elwes, who's who they said they uh, partly part of the reason why they cast him was because he, they felt like he looked like Errol Flynn. That's what I thought actually watching the film. So it made sense. But I'm looking at this and I'm also sort of noticing he's a little bit more Errol Flynn than Errol Flynn. Uh, and that's what makes it, that's what makes the satire work. Exactly. Uh, what, he's, what? Not, he's not, he's not, He's not actually, uh, he's not, he's not so much uh, pulling off an Errol Flynn impression here. He's, he's, he's acting as Wesley in, in The Princess Bride all over again. That, that too, I noticed as well. So you're saying he's more more Errol Flynn than Errol Flynn. He's like a Flynn squared. If you can, if you could square a Flynn, this is a Flynn, squared. Oh, I think you broke her. Uh, <laughs> um, it, yeah, I was. He actually does a great job at, at as playing Robin Hood in this film. That's the thing. It, it was worked too good, actually. I mean, here's a fun fact: he was originally casted for Prince of Thieves for Robin Hood. Before eventually getting them with Mel Brooks to be Robin Hood. I know. Oh. <laughs> okay, first of all, I have no doubt that he would have given a great performance because he can play it straight. But he, no, he would look too damn young for that. Too damn young. But I uh, know. that stuff I do might end up being a running gag. Uh, I think. What time? <laughs> Yeah, so it's 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 poking fun at it's poking fun at so many different uh, as, not just not just uh, Robin Hood stories, but aspects of Robin Hood stories. I think uh, mainly mainly it's poking fun at um, mainly it, it's poking fun at uh, the Earl Flynn version, but it's also it's got it's got its jabs at Prince of Thieves plenty of times, especially. Oh, yeah. With the one line, Prince John says, "Why should the people listen to you?" And he says, "They kind of like, unlike certain other Robin Hoods, I can speak with an English accent." <laughs> yeah. Did you, could you just say that again, James? Unlike certain other Robin Hoods, I can speak with an English accent. <sighs> when this gets on YouTube, you just keep replaying that five-second clip over and over again. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, annoying her, she'll rewatch this episode over and over just for that. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> they don't have too many. They don't. Ha- they don't have uh, too many jabs at the Disney Robin Hood, though. I noticed, but uh, okay. Uh, what are they? You know, what are they going to do there? Uh, with um. Uh, of course, we have one. We have one uh, token of uh, of Mel Brooks's. Of Mel Brooks's comedy, the Jewish jokes. Instead oh, yeah. of rat, instead of Friar Tuck, we have Rabbi Tuckman. Yeah, that's what I know. Who goes around? Who goes around with wine barrels and gives out circumcisions? Yes. yes. Would you like to tell us what tool he uses for the people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> A very small guillotine. <laughs> Uh, You're Robin Hood and your merry men. Are you Flagashlum? 
No, we're straight. <laughs> but, oh, I love, actually, oh, my favorite line. One we used to always quote as kids, and another, uh, another jab, another jab at Prince of Thieves. We have a character named Blinken. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, making fun of the blind character from Prince of Thieves, which is very ballsy because you, for some reason, we we don't have that to, but, taboo anymore. You can't make fun of blind people, but um, but in this movie they did that and it's hilarious. So the first time you see him, he's sitting on a toilet, not realizing that the <laughs> the house has moved around him. He what, gets up and he's like, "Oh, I thought there was a door there." Ah, oh, Master Robin! He's grabbing his statue. <laughs> you have no you arms! Lost your arms in battle! Oh, and you got some boots, too. You grew some nice breasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like when I'm at the become the sheriff of Nottingham. A black sheriff? He's black? So what? It works in blazing saddles. <laughs> oh, yes. Th- thank you for giving us Dave Chappelle your first, his first role on screen. Yep. Dave Chappelle, first uh, screen appearance film. Yeah. Who would have known that his father was Isaac Hayes? Yes, I love that. I was like, Isaac Hayes, is that you? Goddamn. He breaks up in the beginning of the movie. What you heard, sir, was the breaking of this poor man's heart. <laughs> oh, yes, right, right. Uh... And it, this, it's... I do have a special story to tell regarding this. Ooh, story time. Okay. So I went... So when my... When my neighbor's kids were in high school, they, uh... Uh, the older of the two, uh, his, his name is Ben, yeah, yeah, they, they had a... We had a British family who lived next door and I babysat with their kids for many years. When they were in high school, the older of them... Uh, was actually the sheriff of Nottingham in the in the school's uh, uh, Robin Hood uh, production, which they did, which they did as a pan, as a slash pantomime uh, homebrew written uh, version of of the story of Robin Hood. Right. And I say it like that because. Uh, I say it like that because uh, this was a school production. Uh, they specifically wrote the music, and no, they didn't write the music. Uh, they wrote the story for the school so that it could be formed by kids, be form, be performed by kids as a comedy. And there were two sources, two sources where they got their songs from for this version. Men and tights. Disney's Robin Hood. No. You're close. You're very, very close. Men and Tights? Prince of Thieves. Mm, absolutely not. Men and Tights? Many Tights. <laughs> uh, men, they had songs from Men and Tights and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. What? What? <laughs> you f- what? Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. What were the songs used from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Uh, there's one point where, uh, where, uh, where the sheriff sings, uh, Truly Scrumptious to, to Maid Marian. Oh, God. What? Most of all, I'm eating Pringles! That was one of the... This is one of the movies I watched with that with the with the sheriff when he was a little bitty boy, so he knew the song. Uh. And oh, and here's the irony. Here's the beautiful irony. After this, after this play, uh, uh, my neighbor, my neighbor kid, and the actress who played Maid Marian dated for a while. The sheriff got made Marion at the end. Yeah! Oh! Oh! Yeah. oh. <laughs> Alan Rickman is jealous. Yes. Yes. Score. Score. 
But it didn't last, did it? <laughs> it didn't. What, do you, what else do you expect when the when their opening piece was the Sherwood Forest rap, performed by high schoolers with oh, guitar? Yes. <laughs> oh. That was great. I fucking love that bit at the beginning, just to explain everything. <laughs> I love that scene in the movie where they're just like, "Oh, this is the hip version of Robin Hood." It's like it's poking fun at itself. I thought that was a terrific track, but they. But can you imagine in school kids playing that on guitar? Do 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 do. And they're trying to rap along with it, and it was it was kind of laughable. But anyway. Oh man, it's just oh, so good, it's so funny. It's yeah, Men in Tights is is a, it's a good. It's not as good as the other Brooks films. I think this was part of a downhill uh, slope for, for Mel Brooks. You know, the they say, they he went from there to Dracula Dead and Loving It, which is another guilty pleasure for me to revisit every couple of years. Uh, but when you compare those movies to the earlier ones, it's is it as strong? Do, what do you guys think? Well, I have the sound theory of this. Mm-hmm. It's the 90s. John Bluth, John Hughes, Mel Brooks. The 90s came along and they're like, something happened because they didn't make stuff that that was good like before. It's like, a, like I said, a downhill slope. What happened? I mean, we went from stuff like, okay, John Bluth from stuff like The House, the Secret of Nim, Land Before Time, to Troll in Central Frickin' Park. How do you do that? You're skipping Thumbelina. How dare you? So, I'm going to say nothing else. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, there was a review. Uh, it says here, before the film was released, the test audiences did overall feel the film was a good spoof, but only about one-fourth of those surveyed felt the film was strong enough to launch a sequel. Which which they spoof... with The concept of which they spoof in... In rhyme. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And uh, I sort of think to myself, wait a minute, didn't they already joke about a second film in Spaceballs with Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money? Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is the this is the ongoing weakness of the of the film is Mel Brooks uh, repeating past jokes. When he's homaging past jokes, that's the difference. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was really funny, to be honest. I thought the, the performances oh, yeah. were good, and I thought it was a decent Mel Brooks film, in my opinion. I mean, so... Oh, yeah, I'm not complaining about... I'm not saying it was a bad movie at all. No. I'm, that's just, like, on my one critique about it. I haven't seen the film in years, but I might have to rewatch it. It's, mm-hmm. It has a lot of, like... Even, like, Dom DeLuise comes in for a bit part and he does his uh, Marlon Brando impression throughout the whole thing uh, because he's the Dom yeah <laughs> yeah the Don Don G- G- Giovanni Don Giovanni mm-hmm. he's, he's got like a lizard too <laughs> just like ch- it's, it's funny it's, it's funny too I got cotton swabs in my mouth I was uh, I went to visit the dentist <laughs> it's, it's funny too because he has the lizard and it's like uh uh, Rottingham was like, "What's wrong with the lizard? Is it, it has like a limp or something?" And it's like, "No, no, no! It's, it, it was just sleeping." Charlie, Charlie, wake up, Charlie, wake up! <laughs> it's a reference like all dogs go to heaven because it was just like, <laughs> Charlie. I noticed. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, one of, the, actually one of the jokes that I that I get now when, when look, looking back on it, which I thought was perfect. Um, they have, uh, near the end of the film, there's a, there's a, when they're, when the sheriff is about to marry, married Marion, um, Amy Yazbek, my goodness, and this was definitely a 90s movie. Every, if this was a straight up Robin Hood adaptation, think about this, the casting was perfect. If they wanted to do a seri- if they want to do a serious one too. Oh yeah. But uh, moving on from that, they have uh, 
the the abbot uh, approaching, and everyone's greeting him and saying, "Why, well, good afternoon, abbot. Abbot, hello, abbot. Hey, abbot. Hey, abbot." <laughs> One guy stops, and I was like, uh, "Oh, abbot and Costello, duh." <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's I... just like, I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, the joke at the end when, like, you know, when Robin Hood and May Marion get married, and he goes, and, like, um, <laughs> Robin Hood goes to unlock the chastity belt, he's like, uh, darling, uh, we've got a problem. It doesn't fit. <laughs> what? Don't worry, I can solve it. Go for a locksmith! Go for a locksmith! Go for, Go a, locksmith. for a locksmith! Go for a locksmith. <laughs> it was at this point in my in my young years when we were watching the movie the first time on tape rental uh my folks were concerned that something was about to happen that we shouldn't be able to see or hear and all of a sudden the tape just goes call the locksmith call the locksmith <laughs> wow wow yeah. What are the odds, right? What are the odds? The other gag I oh, you have to mention that I love is at the beginning when um, Robin Hood's in the prison and the guy that's running it is like he's running a hotel. If you need any, if you just need anything, give me a scream. Ah! Coming! <laughs> We're just so busy. Oh, we so busy. <laughs> yeah. What about the stretch? What about the stretchy tongue gag? That was. Oh. <laughs> every every there's a yeah he's uh, he's torturing by stretching his tongue out yeah it was and really it looks good. it looks very car it's very cartoonish oh, yeah but in the back there's like tongue stretching there's like an eye gouger and there's another like torture thing on the left I can't remember what it was it was there was like three of them for the station there's like the tongue stretchers in the middle. Uh, I have to go find this and just have a look. <laughs> because, oh, I just... I then, let's not forget about Patrick Stewart playing King Richard at the end. Ah. From now on... <sighs> from now on, all of the toilets in England will be called John's. <laughs> yeah, the... Yeah, because I knew, I knew Patrick Stewart played Prince John in something, but I couldn't quite remember what... Which one, whether it was Prince of Thieves or um, no. Men of Tights? Uh, they no. were going to get Sean Connery, but he was uh, busy with Prince of Thieves. No, no. You, yeah, Patrick did like a spoof version of Sean Connery's King Richard. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean Men of Tights is actually mainly a spoof of Prince of Thieves with sprinkled in Errol Flynn um, and then a little bit of Disney's Rabbit in some places. I, I, that's what they say... That's what they say about the. That's what they say uh, on like the IMDb and whatnot. But I really felt like it was closer <coughs> to the Earl Flynn version, especially, especially with the, uh, especially with the stick fighting routine. Right. Yeah. Or, well, was, the stick the stick fighting routine was maybe a little bit more, it standard Robin Hood. That that happens in every other adaptation. Even the even the Prince of Thieves version, which actually that was a good fight in the Prince of Thieves. I'll give it that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, as we move forward, there are some more upcoming Robin Hood features. Um, abandon, abandon ship, jump now, <laughs> leave what you can. Oh, oh, here's. Here's here's I, I I told these guys a couple of them ahead of time, but uh, here's one that I forgot to tell you. Uh, the the Wachowski sisters are confirmed. They will have they have written and will direct the film Hood, a modern adaptation of Robin Hood legend. Hood. Wachowskis. The Wachowskis. Oh. Um, but this is quite a while ago, probably. Uh. At Warner Brothers again. At Warner Brothers once again, uh, for with Hood, uh, Sony Pictures has expressed the idea of building a shared universe based on various characters from the Robin Hood mythos. 
Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say Sony Pictures animation with a thing about doing a film on Robin Hood. I, Sony Pictures is still... <laughs> Sony is Sony, babe. Um, yeah, the... After, after Cloud, after Cloud Atlas uh, and many other films, uh, very few people want to work with the Wachowskis. I mean, since in in Hollywood, I mean since since eight is on Netflix, yes, yeah, but otherwise it's only I, got two seasons, and they're doing like a special thing, uh, apparently too to end it all off. Uh, um, let's see here, uh, Lionsgate. Uh, Robin Hood, um, where Taron Edgerton from uh, Kingsman playing Robin as a hip take on the origin story. With Jamie Foxx's Little John, yo. Yeah, and then Disney, of course, doing this their live-action kick. They're actually going to do a... Currently working on doing a Robin Hood movie called Nottingham and Hood... Uh, which would be in similar tone with the Pirates of Caribbean films, and they want, hopefully, they want that to be a, a new adventure franchise that fits within their global brand. Okay, uh, it says it's it says on the IMDb it's it's a remake of the '73 version. Yeah, with real people. That's what I'm hoping. Like, you're I, hoping. I mean, do you think they're gonna do like? You're... A, Hoping. I'm hoping it's live action. What do you think? I mean, I, with humans. Why could? Something like this. And that's what I think. That's what I thought too. But it, they say live action, so how are they gonna do it with animal characters? Like. Uh, well, it uh, could be. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Of all the live action remakes they have done recently, only one, The Jungle Book, was any good. All the others suck. So the odds are not in their favor. Ahem. Oh, please. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, oh no. I hold the great boy, John Wayne. Oh, 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 it's Emma. It had, it, it had Evermore. It, it had Evermore. It had Evermore. Yeah. It had auto tune evermore. Yeah. No, it was. As Emma Watson said, <laughs> I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. Okay. I want it more than <laughs> I can tell. Screw you guys. Okay. <laughs> we love you too. Uh, but yeah, I could see, I I could see it done, uh, semi realistic in the in the sense that they did the Jungle Book. I I could too, but. I, no, actually, I could see that, but I, I just, the, I don't know. If it's, it, it, if it, it's too like too realistic. Like if they're gonna do a live action remake of Robin Hood, they might as well just take the story of that movie and just adapt it with humans. I think, and maybe and maybe do the alternative ending instead. But then again, they said they're gonna do it like Pirates of the Caribbean, which means first movie's gonna be good, it's gonna launch a series that's slowly gonna fade away. I and mean, then we'll have a and then we'll have a cameo with Paul McCartney. I got twenty. <laughs> okay. I got twenty. I got twenty that says in this Robin Hood live action remake, they're gonna get Johnny Depp to play the sheriff. <laughs> I wouldn't hold it against him if they did. Mm. If you only play the sheriff or Prince John, one of the two. Show me a trailer and then I will judge. <laughs> In due time, we'll see that. But uh, Robin Hood is that classic character that we, uh, you know, Hollywood seems to enjoy a lot. You know, the mythos and the legend is just there and people just love the character to bits. Sorry, I found the tongue putting saying it's I beat you up. Um, <laughs> That's why I was just giggling to myself at a moment. <laughs> I speak it all. <laughs> any, any, <laughs> any final thoughts on Robin Hood? Like, as the... come back, Robin, all is forgiven. Help us, please, please help us. <laughs> like. 
any thoughts on like the character of Robin Hood, the mythos, and how Hollywood's adapting and what and all that stuff? Well, it... Come it... back! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we get it, we get it. Honestly, it's a character that can be adapted in many various ways, that's what you've seen tonight, which can bring fun and entertainment to any kind of people. Mm-hmm. It depends on your taste. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And in my in my case, things don't forget to laugh. Yes, even Prince of Thieves has funny moments. Enjoy, yes, enjoy the classics, millennials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bloody millennials giving us a bad night. Get on to it. <laughs> That's the good stuff, you heartless bastards. Uh, what other uh, classic characters should we cover on this podcast? There's plenty of other classic characters that have been adapted into film. Uh, please leave a comment below. Or actually, maybe I'll do a poll just above Cody's head. I'll do a poll for you guys to click on. <laughs> just so you... I might have a select few for you guys to choose from, and that might be the next classic character episode in the future. Uh, thanks for in listening. In the meantime, thanks what for- do we have next? Thanks for listening and watching to this episode of Cinema Royale. For the 100th episode, I figure we dedicate this to a composer. Um, we're talking about Jerry Goldsmith and his composers mm. in film. He, uh, uh-huh. he's, uh, we did a, a composer episode earlier this year, and I figure we do another one. And Jerry Goldsmith is very uh, underrated and needs to be talked about. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say that. Yes! I'm just going to Okay. Super Mario Bros. 3 was a better game. Oh! <laughs> oh the gauntlet's been thrown. Damn you. Ah. Super Mario World is my fave. Uh-huh. God damn it. But yeah, uh, we're just going to talk about a select few of Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack composures in films. And, uh, you know, dedicate that to the man because he, uh, a, cu- a few weeks ago, his anniversary to death was, uh, Imminent, so I was like, oh, I was just talking about Jerry Goldsmith, you know. Sally oh, Pat. his death day happened. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know it's a few weeks behind, but his death di- anniversary was just last month. So. We totally missed celebrating his death day. Oh well. Next year you can make him a cake for his first one. <laughs> okay. It's it's one other episode. We're dedicating someone to uh, the discussion. So, uh, thanks. Thanks again for this, uh, for watching all the way through this episode, my god. Um, check out James and his YouTube channel, and he does great stuff. He just released the DuckTales theme cover featuring my girlfriend, Steph, so it's really good stuff. I will leave... Wherever she is. <laughs> In location to me. <laughs> it's great. It's great stuff. But otherwise, thanks for what watching. about my channel? <laughs> Steph, yes, my girlfriend does have a channel as well. You should definitely check out. She does vlogs and beauty stuff, so it's really good stuff. Check and it out. And maybe, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can go see Cody's channel. Please come support my work. You know, only good video I have is the one that had James in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one that's ready to break a thousand views. All the other ones, five and six. You're a mean one. <laughs> Ginger Grinch. No, no, not that one. The one, the cameo did for Series of Unfortunate Events. For some reason, it, I don't know why that's the most popular one. Uh, oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I forgot about that. He forgets a lot of things. <laughs> I do so many cameos. Oh, well. <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, adios, amigos. Ciao for now. Bye.
attack and seize the fat one. Wait, that's me. <laughs> <laughs>